Hi, and welcome to my OCR AA level biology revision session with me, Christine. So today's lesson, I want to look at the body plans, which is part of your module six, cellular control. So the development of anatomical structures in eukaryotic organisms is regulated by what we know as the homeobox genes. And this is regulated during the embryonic stage. Now, we know this because scientists have looked at Drosophila. Now, Drosophila are very small organisms. They have a very short life cycle. And therefore, what they started to realize is that when they looked at Drosophila, they noticed that they sometimes had mutations occur, which resulted in the limbs, for example, a leg, growing out of their head where the antennae should be. So, the more they investigated, the more they understood that these genes actually contain a highly conserved section of DNA, which is called the homeobox. Now, this homeobox is a 180 base pair sequence of DNA, which encodes for 60 amino acids. Now, these 180 base pair sequence are really similar in animals, in plants, and fungi, and that's why they are highly conserved. There's a few mutations that can occur, but not much. And what that therefore tells us is that these homeobox genes code for transcription factors. These are proteins that bind to DNA to activate or deactivate other genes. And what they do is they ensure that the proper cell differentiation occurs and also that organization. Where does the limbs grow? How does the body actually orientate itself? Now, Hox genes are the specific homeobox genes which are only found in animals. So the Hox genes are responsible for that development of the body plan, i.e. where the head and the tail orientates. The segmentation, so if you think about how a worm is segmented, then if you look at a vertebrate, we have our vertebral column, those segments there as well. How does the organs develop and also where do limb formation occur? So this is all controlled or regulated by these Hox genes. So those Hox genes determine that position of the head and tail region and therefore determine where the brain and the spinal cord will develop. So when we looked at the animal resp response topic area and we looked at the nervous system, we have our central nervous system, which is our brain and our spinal cord. Well, if we actually looked at the brain itself and we looked at the different structures of the brain, we understand that these Hox genes actually code for these transcription factors and these transcription factors are about switching genes on and off, therefore forming this differentiated neural cells within the brain. Now, not only do Hox genes do that, they also regulate levels of what's known as apoptosis and mitosis. So let's just remind ourselves about mitosis then. Mitosis is this production of genetically identical daughter cells for growth, cell replacement and tissue repair. Well, mitosis is controlled by genes. They're controlled by the proto-oncogenes, stimulating cell division, or they're controlled by tumor suppressor genes, which are going to reduce cell division, repair damaged DNA, and promote apoptosis. So what is apoptosis? Well, apoptosis is this programmed cell death. As an organism is developing, as it is growing, it will produce lots of cells. Well, some of those cells are not needed. So it will need to get rid of some of those cells. And it does that through the process of apoptosis. The first thing that happens is the cells will shrink and the nucleus will condense. The membrane will start to bleb in. And what that means is it's starting to surround the organelles. And what you end up with is this cellular and nuclear fragments being produced. We've got what's known as membrane-bound apoptotic bodies. And then our neutrophils can come along and engulf and digest. Well, that process of apoptosis, this programmed cell death, this cell shrinkage, 
chromatin condensation, the formation of these membrane-bound apoptotic bodies, the whole point in that is to ensure that we are actually preventing any potential damage or inflammation in the area. It's a way in which we can re-sculpt the body into a very specific way. So if you look at your hand right now, you will note that your digits are separated. Well, when you were developing, you first had all the cells connected together and then apoptosis occurred and that allowed for the separation, the elimination of the cells that were no longer required. So what happens when something goes wrong? Well, for example, a mutation can actually cause the Hox gene to not produce a transcription factor. If a transcription factor is not produced, that will result in the production of a signaling molecule stopping. Well, that signaling molecule should be triggering apoptosis. So if it's not being produced, it's not going to trigger apoptosis. That means that tissue that would normally be eliminated actually remains. So if people have, for example, webbed feet or webbed hands, that is showing you where there's been a mutation occurred, which is stopping this production of a signaling molecule. So the expression of regulatory genes can actually be influenced by the environment, both internally and externally. And there's a very good example of where the regulation of genes was disrupted by a drug. So in the 1950s and 60s, as a preventative of morning sickness, people were given the drug thalidomide. Now, thalidomide actually was later discovered to prevent the normal expression of a particular Hox gene. That resulted in the birth of babies which had shortened limbs. So because there was a disruption to the Hox gene, it then affected the way in which it was signaling for this body plan. So it's important that you note that the body plan is through the use of Hox genes. Hox genes actually regulate mitosis and regulate apoptosis. So I hope you've liked this video and if you have then please do click on the like button and subscribe to my channel. Also, if you haven't already done so, do check out my revision platform www.aiqchat.com.